An unexamined life is not worth living. Friends, this sentence is spoken by Socrates in 360 BC. Socrates was an ancient Greek philosopher who also said that for 5000 years since the birth of civilization, the history of mankind experienced and witnessed the agony and sufferings of man to earn the title rational animal. Socrates believed that each individual has inner voice. This inner self always tells the person about what is good and what is bad, what is right and what is wrong and what to do and what not to do. At the time of any sudden action, a person may fail to think on the virtue of the act, but he can think on the action afterwards. Examining life means introspecting ourselves. Examining life means to think on whether the things we have done are right or wrong, good or bad, or whether we have done something which ought not to be done. The literal meaning of introspection is looking inward. The word introspection is derived from two Latin words. Intro means within and spect means to look. Introspection is defined as an inward focusing on mental experiences such as sensations or feelings, thoughts, decisions and acts. Such conscious mental process helps us examine the appropriateness of our thoughts, feelings and acts. Dubito ergo cogito ergo sum is a philosophical Latin statement made by Ron Descartes in his book Discourse on the Method of Rightly Conducting the Reason and Seeking Truth in the Sciences. Dubito ergo cogito ergo sum means I doubt, therefore I think, therefore I exist. This statement became a fundamental principle of Western philosophy. The act of doubting one's own thoughts and acts got importance in the era of rationalism. Doubting one's own thoughts and acts served as evidence of the reality of one's own existence. The ancient Indian, that is Hindu philosophy, also insisted on the aspect of introspection of life. According to Bhagavad Gita 2.69, what is night for all beings is the time of awakening for the self-controlled and the time of awakening for all beings is night for the introspective saga. This is nothing but introspection. To be brief, we can say that introspection was unprecedented revelation to mankind. Introspection is a way to assess one's own thoughts and acts. Ideally, we must think before we act. Even if we do so, we must think whether we were right or wrong after the act. Introspection is a series of such inquiries about thinking into the inner mind. Let us see the unique statue of the thinker by Auguste Rodin, the French sculptor. This statue represents introspection. If we want to know about being, we don't need to go anywhere, it's within. Rodin stated, what makes my thinker think is that he not only thinks with his brain, with his knitted brow, his distended nostrils and compressed lips, but with every muscle of his arms, back and legs with his clenched fist and gripping toes. Rodin conveyed through this statue that art of thinking is a powerful exercise. Introspection is also a powerful exercise. It is a unique faculty that man got as a gift. Normally, animals respond to stimuli instinctively. However, man makes choices among stimuli. Man often asks questions to his or her inner mind, what he or she wants and why. It is a distinctive faculty that separates man from animals. In this session, we will focus more on the process and methods of introspection that would help us assess and evaluate our inner self. As implied in all definitions, 
introspection is a means of learning about one's own currently ongoing or very recent past or past mental states or processes. We can examine and analyze the data stored in our brain through introspection. We can also note and study the patterns of our past behavior. Primarily, we introspect through contemplation. Under this process, first we doubt, therefore we think. We doubt means we become skeptical. We try to think from both positive and negative sides. No one else can study your mind in this way. To be brief, whatever the knowledge we get about self through introspection is freshly revealed to us by the way of introspection. Psychology and philosophy offer a variety of theories of the nature of introspection. Study of these theories brings out the complexity of the concept of introspection. Moreover, all theories have questioned the accuracy and validity of methods of introspection. However, the concept introspection was never entirely abandoned. Rather, in the last few decades, psychologists such as Anthony Jack, Andrea Rostov, L. M. Erickson and Simon, Goslin, Lambie, Marcel, Barrett and many others revitalized the concept of introspection. These theories claim that consciousness, fair thoughts and beliefs, unbiased perception, appropriate personal identity and other such mental expressions are consequences of the introspection process. Let us see how we can attempt introspection on three levels such as review of day to day activities and decisions, preparation for certain types of decisions or acts and decisions regarding self growth and self development. First review of day to day activities and decisions. Many times we hear people saying so and so made me do it, I was helpless and so I did it, no one listens to me or so and so was really pushing me to do so. In all such situations the question arises why should we give so much control to others? The answer is because it is easy not to think, rather it is easy not to take responsibility of the decisions. When our decisions are taken by others, we feel like being not responsible for our choices. Once we start thinking, many questions arise, confusion increases and consequently the responsibility of outcomes from decisions automatically increases. These two diagrams show how introspection helps filter the biases, interpretations, distortions and assumptions. Actions without introspection. This picture shows direct response. Introspection process is not adopted here. That is why the biased interpretations may affect outcome. Confusions arise because of our biased interpretations, distortions and assumptions that lie in our mind. They dominate our reality, interpretations and decisions. Introspection makes us recognize how we deviate from reality and hence from appropriate decision. Actions after introspection. In this picture, we can see that our biased interpretations, distortions and assumptions are filtered through introspection. At the end of the day, while going to bed, we have to think of every single action, thought and decision of the day. We must examine it from various angles. We have to cultivate a habit of introspection. The problem is that instead of developing this habit, we create certain blocks or barricades around us. This inhibits the ability to learn properly from our experiences. Introspection is like windows. It is up to us whether to open them or shut them. Second, Preparation for certain types of decisions or acts. Some of our decisions are so important that they can change or shape or spoil or even turn our life around. For example, career, accepting a new job or changing the present job, 
marriage, divorce and so on. We can follow this process to make such decisions. This chart shows how we can ask a question why. For example, when you want to change your present job, ask why. You will get a certain answer. You have to ask why again to your answer. You need to ask why till you would reach the logical end and get satisfactory answer. This is a classic problem solving technique. In such decisions, introspection helps us make proper decisions. If wrong decisions are made, it may be difficult to repair or repent. Also, the time and energy we spent is not recoverable. Introspection would help minimize the losses. The next question we need to ask is, what if I were wrong? In short, we should think on the positive and negative sides of the decision. We should unfold all likely and distant possibilities of the outcome. This method seems to be painful, but in exchange, you will get deep satisfaction of good decisions. Third, decisions regarding self-growth and self-development. Since the beginning of the history of mankind, man has steadily strived for his betterment. Human beings always struggle to grow, mature and develop to their fullest potential throughout their lifetime. All the terms such as self-development, personal development, self-growth, personal growth, self-improvement or personal improvement describes the need to develop further. These terms are interpreted differently by different people. However, the meaning of these terms to all is the same. It is self-growth or self-development. Self-assessment helps us in self-development. Self-assessment means assessment or evaluation of yourself or one's actions, attitudes and performance. Introspection regarding self-assessment is looking inwards towards the self. Certainly it is not easy because it is our normal tendency to highlight the positive aspects and conceal the negative aspects of our life. One of the meanings of self-assessment is evaluating strengths and weaknesses of our personality. Such assessment is possible only when we look inwards at the personality traits. Our strengths and weaknesses are dependent on various combinations and development of traits. Some of these traits are dominant and some are dormant. Introspection. Look at this picture carefully. You will find one face looking inward. Introspection helps to turn inwards and look towards the self impersonally and objectively. In Chinese philosophy, yin and yang are described as complementary opposites within a greater whole or totality. Yin means dark and yang means light. Similarly, our mind has these two sides. Introspection would help us observe both these sides. For example, if one feels that he or she is cooperative, then introspection helps him or her think whether in fact he or she is cooperative. We have to recall some incidences where we have cooperated with others. We must examine these incidents from all the angles. We must assess these incidents even from other people's points of view and make sure whether this really is so. Self-assessment is necessary when we need to make certain decisions about goal of our life. These decisions are based on self-assessment or evaluation of our strengths and weaknesses. For example, you want to choose a career after graduation. If you want to be a teacher, then warmth, openness to change, reasoning, sensitivity and liveliness should be your strengths. These traits would help you become a good teacher. In this situation, we have to find out whether we have these strengths or not. Certainly, introspection would help us to make such decisions. How can we ascertain our strengths or weaknesses? There is no one and only method of finding one's strengths and weaknesses. Different psychologists and personologists have developed different methods. These methods are devised for different purposes. 
Therefore, the objectives of each method are different. Raymond Cattell's 16 personality factor model of traits would be helpful for self assessment. The big five trait model also may be useful, but it is difficult to assess the self with the big five trait model because innumerable traits are incorporated in this model. We may be confused in assessing the self. Hence, Cattell's 16 PF model would appear comparatively easy to use. We have learnt both these models in previous sessions. Let us review Cattell's 16 PF model again. 1. Warmth is considered indicative of friendliness towards others and willingness to participate. 2. Reasoning is thought to be revealing the mental ability and intellect. 3. Emotional stability refers to the candidate's ability to adapt while under stress and whether they are easily upset. 4. Dominance ascertains the level of aggression, assertiveness and cooperation. 5. Liveliness tends to indicate whether the candidate is likely to be cheerful or expressive as opposed to introverted or serious. 6. Rule consciousness generally conveys attitudes towards authority and likelihood of obedience. 7. Social boldness refers to whether an individual is likely to be timid or shy as opposed to being uninhibited or outgoing. 8. Sensitivity considers whether a person is compassionate and sympathetic to others or if he or she tends to be more objective. 9. Vigilance specifies how trusting, accepting or suspicious the individual may be around others. 10. Abstractedness can refer to being imaginative or solution oriented, but at the higher level can also suggest being impractical. 11. Privateness can indicate how forthright or non-disclosing an individual might be. 12. Apprehension is descriptive of whether someone may be more self-assured or insecure. 13. Openness to change is regarded as flexibility and a liberal attitude as opposed to being attached to the familiar. 14. Self-reliance identifies how self-sufficient or group-oriented an individual might be. 15. Perfectionism refers to self-discipline and precision as opposed to impulsiveness. 16. Tension conveys the likelihood of being time driven or impatient instead of being relaxed and patient. These are 16 wide ranging traits. This model aims to assess personality in terms of traits and accordingly individual qualities. These traits are to be assessed on a scale ranging between high and low. We can get information about individual temperament and nature, hence it would be ideal for self-development. So far as measurement of strengths and weaknesses is concerned, the golden mean of the scale should be treated as strengths and the extent of distance from golden mean towards high or low ends will be the weaknesses. There is one famous Greek say, nothing over much is the counsel of sanity. Let us have a look upon the quote. It is from Maiden Agon, means the temple of Apollo at Delphi in ancient Greece. This is an engraving by the seven sages. This saying along with alternates like nothing in excess, moderation in all things and measure in all affirms the importance of temperance. Temperance is one of the four cardinal virtues. The other three are justice, wisdom and courage. Temperance means that one can stand above one's thoughts, passions and actions and moderate or temper them. When we mindfully moderate thoughts and actions, we use a kind of transcendental consciousness, something above the ordinary ego. One way to develop this transcendental consciousness is by introspection. Hence Plato saw this saying and said, know thyself as similar in meaning in Carmidas 164d. This quote simply states that we can get good temperance and hence mystical mindfulness through introspection. 
द इंस्क्रिप्शन एट डेल्फी ई और एल नो दाई सेल्फ नथिंग ओवर मच श्योरिटी देन रूइन सेंग ऑफ द सेवन सेजेस अ केस समीर कंप्लीटेड हिज हायर सेकेंडरी स्कूल एग्जामिनेशन ही पास विथ नाइंटी परसेंट मार्क्स ही स्कोर्ड वेल इन वेरियस एंट्रेंस टेस्ट समीर टोल्ड हिज पेरेंट्स दैट ही वॉन्टेड टू डू समथिंग इन नॉन कन्वेंशनल एरिया ही वॉन्टेड टू कॉन्ट्रीब्यूट टू सोसाइटी एट लार्ज हिज पेरेंट्स वॉन्टेड हिम टू जॉइन इंजीनियरिंग कोर्स समीर वॉज रिलेक्टिंग टू जॉइन हाउ एवर ही जॉइंड इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज हिज पेरेंट्स परसुएड हिम टू डू सो आफ्टर वन ईयर पेरेंट्स रियलाइज दैट समीर वॉज नॉट इंटरेस्टेड इन इंजीनियरिंग कोर्स हाउ एवर दे फोर्स्ट हिम टू कम्प्लीट वन मोर ईयर दे स्पेंड अ लॉट ऑफ मनी ऑन स्पेशल ट्यूशन इन स्पाइट ऑफ ऑल एफर्ट्स समीर फेल्ड इन द सेकेंड ईयर पेरेंट्स वेर फ्रस्ट्रेटेड एंड टुक हिम टू डॉक्टर डेविड अ सकाइट्रिस्ट आफ्टर अ केयरफुल एग्जामिनेशन डॉक्टर डेविड टोल्ड समीर्स पेरेंट्स टू लेट हिम मेक हिज ओन डिसीजन देर वॉज नथिंग रॉन्ग विथ हिम ही वॉज क्वाइट इंटेलिजेंट द फैक्ट दैट हिज इंटरेस्ट वेर टोटली डिफरेंट ही माइट हैव सम हिंडन क्वालिटीज दैट ही वॉज मोर इंटरेस्टेड इन डॉक्टर डेविड टॉट समीर द टेक्निक ऑफ इंट्रस्पेक्शन He also taught Samir how to list down one's own strengths and weaknesses. Doctor had three extensive sessions with Samir. He wrote down some incidents, names of some close relatives, some close friends, hobbies and so on. Doctor David told him to examine all these from different points of view. For instance, how his mother, father or friends thought about him, his hobbies or some of his decisions. how far were these points of view appropriate why sami's mind was not ready to accept what others expect to what extent was sami ready to accept the responsibility of his own decisions the doctor told him to think on all possible answers rationally he also told him to write down all this process on a note paper sami was told to verify these options with reference to his strengths and weaknesses dr david told him to choose the best one where he would find the most fit samir completed that session after coming home he repeated this exercise and got answers within 2 weeks he decided to join environment degree course he also completed post graduation and doctorate in environmental studies presently he is a well known consultant in ecology projects He decided to develop introspection training course for graduate students in future. Samir's is a common story. Let us see how Samir got the proper way out. Samir's decision was based on his strengths and weaknesses. He scored the golden mean in reasoning, sensitivity, openness to change, vigilance and warmth. These were his strengths. On the other hand, he scored high score in tension, privateness and low score in perfection apprehension dominance and emotional stability these were samir's weaknesses samir decided to join degree course in environmental science he continued this exercises in future presently samir is known as a very successful environmentalist and consultant friends to be brief introspection and self assessment help us in day to day matters as well as in important decisions of life thank you